Hello and welcome to another devlog for Blue Sky Aces, a retro-inspired flight simulator set during the First World War. In this video I'm going to detail work done over the last couple of weeks towards getting a demo build ready to release on Steam, and what still remains to be done. There's a link to the game's Steam page in the description if you'd like to check it out. The first task was to restrict which aircraft and missions could be flown in the demo build, which is a little bit more involved than what it might sound. The main challenge is to prevent someone from reverse engineering the demo in order to play more of the game than they were supposed to. And the easiest way to, of doing this is to simply include only the parts that they need for the demo. I could do this manually by checking and unchecking scenes in the editor each time I wanted to do a build. However, this is tedious and error prone. Fortunately, I found an easy way to customize the build using a simple bit of script which allowed me to automate the process. This small piece of code is all that's required to generate my demo build. And the best thing is that it can be all be done from the click of a button in the editor. Here you can see the result, a demo build where only some of the aircraft can be flown. The list of available missions is also restricted to just the ones that were included in the build. In the final release I aim to have many more missions, but for now this is just the list of ones that I've been using for my development. Unfortunately, this isn't a job done. There's still a few remaining tasks to go. Last weekend was spent polishing the mission scenes with additional props. The trenches were spruced up with some additional details like sandbags, barbed wire and tree stumps. Here you can see the difference it makes. In addition to improving the look, it also makes it more challenging to strafe the soldiers in the trenches. The forest and farm areas of the map had additional shrubs, grasses and crops added to help soften the terrain. Again, you can see the difference it makes. Blank spaces now contain life, and the trees now feel part of the landscape. In order to add all of these items without affecting performance, I used the neat wee trick of using Unity's particle system to render them, as it's much faster than adding them to the scene one by one, and it's perfectly suited for rendering large numbers of small meshes efficiently. All I had to do was create a few simple scripts to randomly generate particle locations in the editor, and then generate the mesh particles at runtime from the saved locations. So what's next? Well, there's more polishing to go, which will be the focus this week. And then I'll begin testing the demo build more thoroughly, which will include profiling performance work on a variety of computers to ensure that the game performs as expected. That's it for this time. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this, and subscribe to stay up to date with my progress. If you'd like to know more, then check out the link in the description to the game's Steam page. Don't forget to wishlist it so you'll be notified of any updates and when the demo is released.